Hello, welcome to another episode of Varsity 360. I'm Colombian sports editor Micah Rice, joined this week by Will Denner, uh, coming to you from the First Pacific Financial Studio. Of course, thank you to First Pacific Financial Studio for supporting the show, for su- supporting high school sports, and by extension, supporting the community at large. That's what they're all about. That's what we're all about. And we are here to talk some baseball and soccer because, Will, believe it or not, we're at the precipice of the postseason for those sports and we've had some really exciting contests especially in the foray that uh, we want to talk about yeah it's an exciting time of year and i'm excited to talk more about it well let's uh, talk baseball first and the foray Grayer st helens league because uh talk about a crazy end to that league season you, you go into it with a uh, uh, skyview battleground and camas all having a shot at winning the league title in fact uh, uh you went into the final day of league play uh, going out to see Battleground in Union, knowing that Battleground had to win to wrap up the number one spot. But uh, Union, the fourth place team, ends up knocking them off. Meanwhile, across town, Camus uh, gets a second straight uh, seventh inning rally to beat Skyview and take the number one spot away from the Tigers. Uh, just uh, take me through that final day and kind of the, the ins and outs and the twists and turns. Sure, yeah. I mean, I think it was, it was an interesting decision on our part of which game to cover and you know it's we say it almost every year about this league just how little separates one through four and even in a year like this one where you know a union team that's that's been a little bit up and down might not have the most impressive record shouldn't surprise us that they come out and come out swinging on that final day to down battleground Um, really good performance from from the pitching Uh, they got they got contributions throughout the lineup and really the message going into a game like that when they didn't have a path to the playoffs was just hey let's have fun today and uh in the in the process they they kind of make a memorable game for their seniors um they they get a little confidence boost for for some uh, sophomores and freshman players and then you know also play spoiler to battleground uh, a team that was looking to get a share of its first league title since 2017 um they're still in the playoffs as a two seed but then that opens the door for camus who was trailing against Skyview across town uh, to come back for the second day in a row, uh, trailing in the seventh inning and and uh, get the win. So Camus wraps up. I think that was their third league title, which puts them in the first seed, Battleground in the two, and Skyview in the three going into by districts. Well, let's talk about Camus a little bit more because, yes, you're right, the third consecutive league title for the Papermakers. And it's really been a season where I, I, I saw them early. They went out and uh, they had dropped their first two league games to battleground and mm-hmm. i saw them in the third game of that series where they uh they ended up 10 running the tigers and kind of the sense among the team was hey we might be two-time defending league champions but we view ourselves as the underdog and it was kind of that underdog grit and mentality that really shown in their final series against skyview where like you said on tuesday of last week they put together two runs in the bottom of the seventh to win five to four and then they follow that on Friday with two runs in the seventh to win four to three. And so that, uh, you know, I I think the thing with Camus is they have a lot of really solid players up and down the lineup. They don't have that that one player that maybe you go, wow, uh, mm-hmm. he's head and shoulders above everybody else on the team. Certainly, you know, you, you could pick out any one of seven guys, uh, uh, you know, on, on that team as probably would be a top three player on on many other teams. But uh, uh, it's just that that grit that the paper maker showed that I think uh, made the difference in the last week. Yeah, you mentioned something there that I found interesting. I remember. When when you covered that game, and I remember that quote from that story, I think it was Diego Trujillo who said, mm-hmm. we're coming into this year as underdogs. And I was thinking, really? Camus baseball is an underdog? But it kind of was this year. And, uh, you know, I think it, it speaks to just, you know, the the stability within that program under uh, head coach Stephen Short. And just, you know, maybe, like you said, not having quite the top end talent of some years past. Um, you know, obviously graduating a talented senior class last year led by Max Frazier. But, um, you know, I think, I think it speaks to just how prepared 
prepared a team like that is when they can consistently get it done in those high leverage moments. Um, and after, you know, losing their first two games in league to battleground, kind of a tough position to be in, but they battled their way back and, and uh, wrapped up that third league title. So what does that mean for the three teams, Camus, battleground and Skyview that are advancing to the by district playoffs? Um, first games in that by district tournament are May 7th, uh, Camus, the number one seed, they will host the number two seed from the South Puget Sound League in a winner to state game. Mm -hmm. uh, Battleground and Skyview have a path that's a little bit tougher. They will both have to survive loser out games. Uh, Battleground starting with a, a game against the South Puget Sound League number eight team and Skyview with a, a game against the South Puget Sound League number five. But uh, uh, you win a couple of loser out games and you find yourself in state. And, and I think uh, certainly Battleground and Skyview have shown that they they can beat uh, they can beat each other. They can beat Camus, and that was yeah. just the sort of parody that uh, the, that that league showed. So you'd think if one team can make it to state all three would have a shot. Sure, yeah, I think uh, you hope that, you know, the kind of the gauntlet that they just went through these past three weeks is exactly what you need to get prepared for that by district tournament spot. But it is definitely a tougher road as the two and three. I mean, I know that was really the tough part for Battleground after that loss on Friday. It was not so much the league title, but really just, you know, now they don't have any margin for error. They have to win not only their first game, but they got to win, I believe, a couple more to get to get through to that state regional round. And, um, you know, they, it, it, you, you know, you kind of have to, you know, stack your pitching in a way that's strategic and, and things like that when you have close games back to back. Um, but, you know, a battleground team, I think, who, who has been tested uh, this year and they have one of the, the state's best players in Jackson Hotchkiss, who, you know, you, you definitely want a guy like that to perform in, in high pressure moments. James Gill has also really popped uh, sophomore for them. He's their cleanup hitter and one of their best pitchers as well. And I think, uh, you know, under first year coach Seth Johnson, there's been a pretty big, um, you know, shift in that program. And he's a guy who, when he was the coach of Skyview, um, who, who, you know, led the storm, I think, to like three three state semifinals in a row once upon a time. So uh, definitely some good experience on their side. And then Skyview, um, they'll be on the road, obviously, but they have a lot of uh, senior experience as well. Guys like uh, Brady Davis and Caden Spanier and uh, Gavin Poffenroth, guys that, you know, will, will definitely help for, for a playoff run like this. All right, let's move on to the three A's where we also have clarity in, in, in that league. Uh, Kelso, uh, number two in the state's RPI ranking, 17 and one, but... Uh, uh, obviously, they're going to be the number one seed out of that league. But uh, uh, Evergreen showed that, uh, you know, at any given day, someone can knock off the top dogs. And that's what the Plainsmen did uh, uh, April 22nd, beating the Highlanders 4-0. Uh, Evergreen joins Prairie with also, you know, Prairie, the number two seed, getting a postseason berth. <clears throat> Similar type of thing with uh, the 4A where Kelso, number one seed uh, out of the league, plays the South Sound number two uh, in a winner to state game. Prairie gets the South Sound number five in a loser out game. And Evergreen gets the NPSL North Puget Sound League number three in a loser out game. So yeah, a, a little tougher road for Prairie and Evergreen uh, to get through. But I, I got to think for Evergreen, the uh, uh, the confident, that, that win over Kelso is the kind that you can point to and say, hey, any given day, if we do what we need to do, if we get the pitching that we can get, uh, that we can beat anybody. Yeah, I love that story that Tim Martinez reported last week on Evergreen and just how ridiculously banged up they were at the start of the year, that they were really just patching together a lineup and putting guys in positions they hadn't been before. And, and you know, they kind of weathered that storm. They, they've they gotten a little healthier. They got they recently returned Jaden Crace, who was injured for part of the year. He was the first team all-league pitcher last year. Um, and, yeah, for them to to hand Kelso its only loss of the season is definitely a proud moment. And, and uh, Kelso, on the other hand, what a buzzsaw. They've <laughs> been uh, not only, you know, running through that league, but they got wins over a good Skyview and Battleground team as well. They're going to be a tough out at, at the 3A level this year. Well, and then Prairie, obviously, that that's a, a, a lineup that uh, – yeah, at any given day, you know, you have mm -hmm. different guys that can contribute, but I, I think their key player is Nate Merritt, yep. not only uh, in the lineup with his uh, bat, but also on the mound. He uh, has consistently been one of their best pitchers this year. Yeah, so Prairie won the league title last year, and, and some of those guys were along for that run under uh, now now second-year coach Tanner Bogart. And Nate Merritt and Isaac Watson are a pretty good one-two uh, punch on the mound, and especially after you graduate a player like Brady Trombello last year, they've really uh, kept it kept it. Rolling 
rolling in that regard. And, um, you know, they, they kind of took their lumps against Kelso. They, they had some close games, but unfortunately got swept in that ser series. But um, they get another shot at the by-district playoffs and, you know, another talented team in our area that, that should be a force. Well, I think momentum plays such a big role mm. in the, the ebbs and flows of the season. Not only, you know, you, you get confidence, you get healthy like Evergreen did, but just the fact that you play these three-game series against uh, a common opponent, um, you know, that can have the, the, the case of, if, you know, you win the first game of that series, then you're feeling kind of good about yourself and how you match up with that other team. Uh, but if you drop the first game of that series, and, and I, I think a lot of teams, uh, with the exception of Evergreen, kind of found that out with Kelso, mm -hmm. you, you kind of get staggered a little bit if you, um, if, if, if you drop the first game against a really good team. And instead of having a week to kind of, you know, wipe the slate clean, you're back facing the same team, you know, a, a day or two later. And that can, that can lead to, I think, um, uh, exaggerated shifts in momentum, the way that's uh, structured. I think so too. And, yeah. you know, especially like just the way that three game series go, I mean, obviously you kind of put your, your top pitcher on the mound and then depending on the depth of a team that can, that can sometimes drop off depending on where you're at for games two and three. And it's really kind of a chess match throughout the week to get that right. And, um, and yeah, I think that's what helped happened in that Kelso Prairie series from earlier this year. And then, um, but then on the flip side, I think even when you avoid, you know, a sweep, much like Evergreen did against Kelso, that can feel like a big difference too versus losing three in a row. So, sure, yeah. uh, two A Greater St. Helens League baseball. Obviously, it's uh, another uh, great season for uh, the two teams that have really been <laughs> sort of at the top of that league: Columbia River and Ridgefield. If River wins out now, obviously, uh, we're, we're recording this on a Tuesday. It's it's been a very wet Tuesday, <laughs> so we don't know if if the games uh, scheduled tonight are gonna happen but uh, as as we record this um rivers in the driver's seat if yeah. they win out they're the league champ uh they've only lost once to ridgefield and that was really early in the season before yeah. you know you reported the story about how they went on their spring break and came back and and they haven't lost since yeah. um ridgefield uh they they have two losses one against river and one against hudson's bay uh but uh ridgefield kind of controls their own destiny to be the number two seed and then behind that it's uh mark morris ari long uh even washugal is in the mix for uh, uh, anywhere from seeds three, four, and trying to avoid that dreaded number five uh, pigtail slot. But yeah. uh, uh, obviously the 2A Greater St. Helens League, always an entertaining league. Yeah, it's kind of crazy to think about that both Columbia River and Ridgefield, you know, two teams with quite a bit of postseason tradition did not make it to the state regional last year. Both both lost in that final uh, winner to state loser out game, but both are kind of a bit more experienced this year, starting with Columbia River, who I believe has 14 seniors on their team. And, you know, they they have, you know, kind of that strong pitching back again. They have a really good rotation led by uh, Noah Cox and Zach Zeibel, who was the, uh, the 2A GSHL pitcher of the year last year. Um, and then a guy like Harrison uh, Hofarth and, and Noah Larson. Larson, who's slowly working his way back from an injury. He was a big part of their run to the state championship game two years ago. And I think their uh, team earned run average is about 1.70 right now, which is pretty impressive in, in that league. And um, and then, you know, between behind that defense and pitching, kind of their constant, their their offense is also heated up lately with a guy like Chris Parkin, uh, who's, who's uh, one of the best also defensive shortstops in our area. So I think River ha definitely has what it takes to uh, – make a deep postseason run with that experienced group and then and Ridgefield as well a team that um, has I think been remarkably consistent in the close games I mean I you look back to that that crazy 16 inning game they played against River earlier this year and and they've done it a, a handful of times in this league now and and they have a, a host of seniors who are big time players for them as well like Rocco Wright and Colton Warren um, uh, Nate Olmos who is a transfer from Washougal who slid into their starting catch a roll this year um just two really deep teams who who i'm really excited to see what they can do this postseason yeah and, and tracking their results as they come in this year it's especially with richfield it's almost like every different game it's a different guy that yeah. stepped up sometimes it's like liam ostrom yeah. or you know then landon de beaumont mm -hmm. might have a big game and so that's that's just a team that i i think can really 
pride itself on its depth and and uh, having guys step up uh, in different spots. Yeah, for sure. And and another kind of two coaching staffs that have a lot of experience too with guys like Stephen Donahue over at River. I think he's the longest tenured coach in the area. Nick Allen's been at Ridgefield forever, so they they know their identity as a program. And I think this time of year that goes a long way as well. Well, and also how you see the four A and the three A's because it's a by district tournament with the the teams up north and the Tacoma area that they they often go up north for their district championship uh-huh. games. Two uh, A, it's a baseball festival at the Rourke. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think it's uh, first round games uh, are are at school sites on the seventh, but then after that, the uh, eighth through the eleventh, uh, it's all at uh, Ridgefield Outdoor Recreation Complex. And uh, uh, I, I think they're they're staggering the games a little bit different this year. Yeah, I remember yeah. Uh, Tim talking about that earlier this week, and I I'm excited about that in particular because it's it was always kind of a strange deal where you'd have these two winner to state loser out games happening at the same time. I remember last year it was like Ridgefield and Hudson's Bay were on one field and then River and Mark Morris kind of next door and and trying to cover both of those at the same time. is kind of a uh, tricky thing to do, but I think it, it'll be a good kind of showcase of, of local baseball and the Rourke is one of the best facilities in our area for that. So that'll be exciting. And then when you look outside of the league as well, I mean, teams like Tumwater, uh, two-time state champs and WF West as well. Um, it's a pretty good showcase of, of local teams and district for. Well, hopefully the weather cooperates because yeah. I don't think you'd want to be out there on a day like today when it's sure. dumping buckets, but uh, that, that's what spring in the Northwest is like. It'll probably be sunny in 75. Yeah, we're, <laughs> we're hoping. Hope so. uh, the next uh, sport we're going to get to that's really coming down into the postseason right now is boys soccer. Uh, uh, softball, we'll touch on that down the road. Uh, they, they kind of have a, a little bit of a later schedule. They're still well into league play, but boys soccer, it's a perfect time, I think, to talk about that, especially with the 4A Greater St. Helens League in that, Will, uh, last night you saw Union versus Camus round number two, and uh, as good as the first time these teams played, uh, last night was just as good, uh, with uh, Camus coming out on top two to one after Union took the first clash two to one earlier this year. It means that Union and Camus, as we speak now, are tied atop the 4A Greater St. Helens League. But boy, what a what a couple of matches that just delivered when mm-hmm. it was, you know, talk about talent, talk about drama, talent, of course, being that uh, as the Washington State RPI rankings go right now, Camus and Union are one and two respectively in those rankings. So you're talking about two state title hopefuls that uh, left it all on the pitch last night. Absolutely. And I think last night in particular, I mean, Camus was was so motivated by how that first game ended and it's it's senior night at Doc Harris. There's the biggest crowd they've seen that the whole year really. And just high energy games start to finish. I mean, you, you see some soccer games where maybe both teams are kind of feeling each other out, but they were going for it from the, the opening whistle. And I, you love to see games like that. And great goalkeeping on both sides and just a lot of uh, you know players on both sides who know each other well who obviously love to compete against each other and it's it's intense um, but I think there's usually a good amount of sportsmanship involved as well and just uh, really high energy games start to finish and of course Camus scores that um, stoppage time goal from from Owen Tuttle and then gets a huge night from uh, goalkeeper Will Tavez as well um, just really high drama and I think for Union um, walked away feeling like it was a pretty hard fought game. Jason Moore, Union's head coach, uh, made sure to tell me after the game that that was a pretty hard fought game, right? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. So uh, both teams, uh, yeah, it's uh, it should be fun um, no matter where they finish in the league with one game left uh, to be played tomorrow night or Wednesday night. Um, it'll be really fun to see what they can do in the postseason. Well, I enjoyed reading your article about uh, last night's match because uh, I think it kind of tied in a really interesting storyline and that being of uh, Camus goalkeeper Will Taves in that uh, uh, the first time they clashed uh, Camus and Union uh, Ca- uh, Union got its uh, golden goal uh, on a, a shot that Will would have said uh, uh, he should have corralled it kind of slipped through his his hands uh, but he came up big with seven saves last night and really played a, a role in uh, uh, making sure Camus came out on top and, and uh, he told you that 
he kind of used that that first uh, first match as a little bit of a a, a motivator. Sure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just uh, yeah, that was kind of a rainy night as well, and it was just kind of a, a fluky play where you know a ball that a goalkeeper probably saves ninety nine out of a hundred times, and it just kind of got away from him. And he said, uh, "Yeah, I, he 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 saved that that screenshot and looked at it on a, almost a daily basis, kind of counting down the days until they could get the rematch." And I feel like that that mindset kind of went for the whole team too. They haven't lost um, a game since that Union game, and and they and it hasn't just been from at the area as well. Like they beat a really good Davis team uh, just last week, I believe, who finished third at state last year. And I feel like Camus has kind of now figured out their identity, and and uh, you know they they really wanted last night's result and. Uh, Again, but yeah, I feel like both these teams now just really know who they are at this point in the season, and it's going to be fascinating to see how they compete um, against some of the top teams in the state. Well, only lo one loss for each team, yep. and that happens to be against each other. <laughs> right, <laughs> so, right. so uh, no team outside of uh, uh, the area has has beaten either Camas or Union. So their postseason journey begins in the first round of the by district playoffs on Saturday. Of course, there's another round of uh, league matches, so we still don't know who's number one and two, but uh, uh, definitely both teams will be looking for a deep run. Yeah, and de it, it, it's worth noting too, I think that in years past that it's it's not so much like baseball where it feels like the gap between one and two in the by district is so major like yes the number two team does have a tougher road but we've seen both of these teams do it where they can they can go on a few road trips out of the area and uh more than hold their own obviously so i think it, much like last year when union was the the number two team and they actually ended up with a deeper run they got all the way to the 4a uh, state quarterfinals so um you know it's it, whoever finishes one and two i think either of these teams is going to be a really tough outcome the postseason well regardless of where they finish. Uh, soccer fans can only thank them for giving us two of the best regular season matches we could hope for. So uh, Camus and Union, kudos for that. Absolutely. Uh, moving on, we'll just touch on 3A briefly because um, there's a huge match coming up uh, uh, You know, between the time we record this and when it's going to publish on Thursday and that Heritage and Mountain View are going to clash for the league title. We already know uh, a bit about both of these teams to know that uh, uh, it should be a, a a, a, a well-contested match and uh, both of these teams I think are probably in a, a position where where they can make some noise in the by district tournament yeah absolutely I th you know Heritage and, and Mountain View have kind of been the class of, of this league in the past couple of years I think it was last year as well when Heritage won won that league title that it came down to that Mountain View game and um, Heritage was kind of the team this year it seemed like he started off a little bit more hot. Um, they've had a couple bumps in the road in recent in recent weeks, but um, meanwhile they've kind of you know re refocused things. And Mountain View has kind of continued to surge, um, setting up this uh, this league title. Um, to be played on Wednesday and then um, and then Evergreen a team that can really knock off anybody on any given night they play a really I feel like uh, just exciting uh, brand of soccer and a guy like Diego Behar who's just uh, one of the, the best players I think in our area as well so um, we don't obviously know how they're going to finish but uh, we'll be interesting to see how they hey, perform it by districts as well well and uh, that moves us on to the 2A a, a team or a league that has put a number of high quality teams into the mm -hmm. postseason, not of, of course, uh, any less than Columbia River, which uh, reigning state champion. But uh, we've talked about earlier this this year about how the Rapids are really finding success in a different way, uh, you know, not relying on one goal scorer like two times state player of the year, Alex Harris anymore. It's more like a, a team uh, approach that has led the Rapids to storm through the uh, two-way Gray St. Helens League with only one real blemish, a shootout. Mm -hmm loss to, to Hudson's Bay. Uh, Columbia Rivers wrapped up the number one seed. Ari Long has wrapped up the number two seed, even though those two teams play tonight. So that'll be kind of a, uh, a good tune-up for the, the district tournament for both of those teams. After that, Ridgefield, Hawkinson, and Hudson's Bay are all battling for seeds three through five. Uh, we should get some clarity uh, for that. But uh, uh, you know, obviously, Columbia River 
you never want to count them out anytime you're talking about postseason just based on their track history. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's worth noting that that loss to Hudson's Bay was their first in this league since 2017. Pretty remarkable run. But um, I think it also kind of speaks to how, how much better this the top of this league has been this year. But also um, for River, yeah, I mean, talking about, you know, graduating a player like Alex Harris, I think kind of when you move on from that, no matter what, your identity is going to be a little bit different. And they've kind of, you know, taken a little bit of time to figure out what that is. Um, they have, you know, a really deep stable of, uh, of, of forwards and midfielders who can score from a variety of different places. And, and they've kind of tried to figure out uh, J.P. Guzman's role, their, their top returning playmaker, who's been dealing with an ankle injury a little bit of late. And then they also had to replace three of four players on their back line, which is never easy to do. But they did have a little bit of stability with uh, co-captain like Carver Taylor and, and Cameron Harris, Alex Harris's brother, who's who's their goalkeeper now for uh, the third consecutive year. So um, I think it's we're probably going to get the best kind of sense of this team once we get to the to the uh, district tournament. Um, they've only played one non-league game, and that was against Skyview, which they won. So I think it, it's always kind of, uh, you know, that's your first real test when you get to the postseason for, for a team like River. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how it goes, but I think um, I think they've shown already that you know moving in a lot of new pieces, a lot of younger pieces, um, they've they've kept things rolling, and it's a talent. It's a it's kudos to you know uh, stability in that program and coaching staff as well. Well, I think it's fortuitous also for both Columbia River and RA Long that the last round of league matches pits them yeah. against each other, uh, even as a kind of a dress rehearsal because RA Long in in the past past few years that has been the team that has really ascended mm -hmm. uh you, you know can you can obviously talk about Ridgefield and and Hawkinson having some uh, uh some great teams in recent years but but Ari Long has uh joined that uh that kind of upper cadre of uh of teams in the 2A Greater St. Helens League yeah I had to look back to see the last time they finished second it hasn't been since 2016 and that was actually the last year Columbia River was a 3A team so it goes to show uh just really how how much uh, Ari Long has developed this year as well and um, you know I think they only have two losses going into that that game tonight and obviously one of them being to River so um, should be really interesting to see how they fare in the postseason as well. Well I always say it about this time of year where did that season go? <laughs> <laughs> you know how how quickly does this pass? I, I mean the, the spring season is always you know it's busy every day, but that even makes it go by quicker. So I can't believe we're basically at, at, at the entry point of the postseason. But here we are. May is one of my favorite months in the sports calendar. There's just tons of fun stuff to watch, uh, whether it be on the baseball diamond, the softball field, uh, the soccer pitch, uh, even track and field, which uh, I know we got some great storylines there. But um, it's going to be a great month. Uh, we're going to be tracking it all the way through here at uh, follow our, our stuff at 360preps.com. Follow our YouTube channel at 360preps1. And uh, another reminder, if, uh, uh, if you want to help honor the best athletes from Southwest Washington, be sure to attend our June 5th All-Region Award Ceremony at the Kiggins Theater with four-time Olympian Kara Winger as the featured speaker. We're gonna, she's going to have a great message, and we're going to uh, pay tribute to all the best athletes from Southwest Washington from this past year. Uh, as always, uh, you know, be, be sure to follow us uh, as we go, and uh, we will see you next week.